Hi, and welcome to this video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to discuss three questions from the topic of simple interest and compound interest. I will show you the questions on the next slide and you can take around three to four minutes to solve these questions. After that, you can have a look at the solution that will follow. So I'll show you the questions and I'll see you on the other side of the video. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the I button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. So in the first question, if the compound interest on a certain sum of money for the second year and the fourth year is 1320 and 1597.2 rupees respectively, then we have to find the sum. Now what you have to understand is this particular context is, if you are looking at the total amounts that would be generated after every year. So you can start with the base as say 100 rupees and you can take the rate of interest as say 10 rupees. And you can keep on looking at the amounts that will be generated after every year. So after one year, 100 rupees would have become 110. 110 rupees after another year at the rate of 10% would have become 121. 121 after another year at the rate of interest of 10% would have become 133.1 and so on. So that is what we are looking at in this particular context. If you look at another side of the story, the amount or the interest that is generated in each year, you will again see a nice pattern that will be followed. So in this case, at the end of the second year or in the first year, let us say for example, at the end of the first year, 100 was the starting amount, 110 is the amount that has been generated at the end of the first year. The interest that would have been accumulated is 10. If you look at the amount or the interest that would have been generated in the second year, what you can say is 110 was the amount at the beginning of the second year, 121 is the amount at the end of the second year, what was the interest that was generated during the second year? It was 121 minus 110 that is 11. If you look at what has happened from year 2 to year 3, what is the interest that has been generated in the third year? It will be nothing but 133.1 minus 121, which will be 0.1 minus 0 is 1 itself, 3 minus 1 will be 2, 3 minus 2 will be 1 and 1 minus 1 will be 0. So now if you look at it, 10, 11, 12.1 and so on, you will see that it is more or less similar to what is happening here. If you look at all these terms, they are in a geometric progression because the common ratio is 1.1 in this context. 100 becomes 110, 110 multiplied by 1.1 becomes 1.21 and so on, 121 and so on. Similarly, if you look at the interest that has been generated in each year, it becomes 10, 11, 12.1. Again, you will see 13.31 uh, and so on and it will continue that way. Right? So that is basically what is happening the interests generated in each year will also be in the form of a GP. So in this case, the interest generated in the second year and the interest generated in the fourth year is 1320, 1597.2. So that is what is happening here. So can we say that 1320 multiplied by R square, multiplied by R will give you the third term, multiplied by R square will give you the fourth term is equal to 1597.2. So using this, we can easily find the value of r here. So r square will be 1597.2 or you can write it as 15972 divided by 13200. So that is what you can do. Now you can see that 11 is something that divides 13200. So I just cancel out an 11 from the denominator. So 11 ones are 11, 11 twos are 22 and two zeros. Similarly, if you cancel out an 11 from the numerator, 11 ones are 11, 11 fours are 44, 11 fives are 55 and 11 twos are 22. So 1452 by 1200. Again, you can cancel out a 12 from the denominator. And if you cancel out a 12 from the numerator, you will get 12 ones are 12, 12 twos are 24, 12 ones are 12. So now you are going to get 121 by 100 as the value of R square. So R will be nothing but 11 by 10. So what you can say is nothing but R is 1.1. R in this case is nothing but the multiplier that we are getting. If you multiply the previous value by 1.1, then you are going to get the next value, which means that the next value has increased from the previous value by 10%. So we can say that the rate of interest here is 10% in this particular context. Now what is happening is 1320 is the interest that has been generated in the second year. 
So, what we can say is if 1320 is the interest that has been generated in the second year and if you look at this particular context that we have got, what is this 11 that we have got? The 11 that we have got is nothing but the interest that would have generated in the first year and 10 percent of the interest that would have been accrued on top of the interest of the first year. Right? So, we are basically going to say that 1320 that is present here is nothing but 1.1 times what was generated in the first year. So, what was generated in the first year? 1320 divided by 1.1 which is nothing but 11, 1s are 11, 11 20s are uh, or 2s are 22 and 2 zeros. So, 1200 was basically the interest that was generated after 1 year. If 1200 is the interest generated after 1 year and the rate of interest is 10 percent per annum, the initial investment should have been 1200 into 10 that is 12000. So, the initial investment in this case is going to be option C that is 12000 rupees. In this question, you have an amount of 9600 rupees invested at 5 percent return and some part of it is invested at 3 percent return. The annual income from both is the same. You have to find what is the total income from the two investments. Now, what is the annual income that would have been generated? So, the income that would have been generated will be 5 percent multiplied by the value that was invested at 5 percent and 3 percent multiplied by the amount that was invested at 3 percent. But the thing that we are getting or the incomes that we are getting from each of these parts is the same. So, can we say that because this is 5 percent to 3 percent, the weights or the ratio in which 9600 would have been split would be 3 is to 5. 5 percent multiplied by 3 parts will be the same as 3 percent multiplied by 5 parts. So, this way we can say that the split of 9600 should have been in the ratio of 3 is to 5. Now, again if you apply the rule of allegation here, what will happen is the first part is giving you the rate of interest as 5 percent, the second part is giving you the rate of interest as 3 percent and these two parts have been split in the ratio of 3 is to 5 here. So, that is what is happening here. You have to find what is basically the average rate of return. So, in this particular context there are two ways to do this. Either you multiply each of these by the same number to increase the gap between these two. And why do we do that? Simply because this 3 is to 5, if you look closely, this 3 is nothing but this average minus 3 percent and this 5 is nothing but 5 percent minus this average. If you club these two things, what are you going to get? 5 percent minus 3 percent, right. So, this is basically what we are going for. The gap between 5 percent and 3 percent should be divided into 3 plus 5 that is 8 parts, that is basically what we are going for. But the gap between 5 and 3 is nothing but 2 percent and 2 divided by 8 is going to give you 0 0.25 percent per part, that is what we are thinking about. So, in this particular context what we can do is we can either keep this as 5 and 3 and then try to divide it into 8 parts. So, the gap is nothing but 2 percent, we have to divide it into 8 parts, each part is going to be equivalent to 0 0.25 percent. Now, we are saying that the gap between this and this is 5 parts, 5 parts is nothing but 1.25 percent because each part was 0 0.25 percent. So, 5 percent minus something will give you 1.25 percent as the result. So, what is that something that we are going for? This is 3.75 percent. So, 5 minus 3.75 will give you 1.25. Similarly, 3 parts will be nothing but 0 0.75 percent, 3 plus 0 0.75 gives you 3.75. That is basically the way in which this looks. So, the effective rate of interest is 3.75 percent. 3.75 percent of what? Of the entire capital that would have been invested. So, 3.75 into 9600 divided by 100 will be your answer. So, you can simply do 375 multiplied by 96 here. Now, again it can be slightly intimidating, but if you think about it, 3.75 multiplied by 2 is 7.5, 7.5 multiplied by 2 is 15. So, you can split this as 375 into 4 into 24, which is going to give you 1500 into 24, 24,000 plus 24 into 500. So, that is basically going to be the value of this. Divided by 100 is also what we need to do. So, we can simply cancel out two zeros from here and here and we are going to get 24 into 15 that is 360 as our answer. What we could have also done in this context is instead of keeping it as 5 and 3, 
and again trying to get 0.25 in the mix, you could have multiplied this by 4. So, this would become 20, this would become 12, this is something that I do not know. The split has to be in the ratio of 3 is to 5. 20 and 12, I have to divide the gap in 8 parts. Each part will be 1 percent. So, in this case, 5 parts will be 15 or 5 parts will be 5 percent, 20 minus 5 will give us 15 as the middle value. But obviously, 15 percent cannot be the effective rate of return because 5 and 3, those are the two values, right? So, because we have multiplied each of them by 2, this has also got multiplied by, uh, by 4, this has also got multiplied by 4. So, the effective rate of interest will be 15 by 4 into 1 by 100 and the value will be into 9600. So, you can simply do this, we will again reach the same place that we had reached here. And so, the answer is 15 into 24 or 360. So, you can use either way to solve this particular question. In this question, if you look at it, Nikki won a certain amount as price half of which she invested in bank A and the rate of interest was R percent per annum compounded annually. Whereas in the second context, the remaining half she invested in bank B that offers simple interest at the rate of R percent per annum. Now, if you are solving this question and you have been asked what is the gap between SI and CI at the end of two years, you should know that the gap between compound interest and SI interest at the end of two years is going to be nothing but P into R by 100 the whole square. So, if you know this formula, it makes your life much easier. So, P into R by 100 the whole square should be the gap between CI and SI for 2 years. So, what we can say here is, let us say P into R by 100 the whole square is written here. This is equal to CI minus SI over, over 2 years if you look at it. So, in this context, what is happening here is compound interest was 1.02 times the simple interest, which means CI is nothing but 1.02 into SI minus SI as it is. So, what are we going to get here? P into R by 100 the whole square will be 0 0.02 times SI. But what is the value of SI? What is the formula for calculating SI over 2 years? It is nothing but principal multiplied by the number of years that is 2 multiplied by the rate of interest that is R divided by 100. Now, R by 100 gets cancelled out from both the sides. P gets cancelled out from both the sides. What is left is R by 100 equals 0 0.02 into 2, which is 0 0.04. And so, we are going to get the value of R as 0 0.04 into 100 or 4 percent. So, the correct answer here is option B that is 4 percent. So, I hope you understood all the concepts that we have discussed in this particular video and going ahead, you will be able to solve questions on SI and CI on your own by applying these concepts. We will see you again in the next video. Till then, happy learning.